Hi everyone, uh, welcome to uh, my second review of the Minecraft Ultra Hardcore Challenge. Uh, this will be reviewing episode 3 which came out last night. I uh, thought I'd leave it to daytime so I should have a bit more energy when I'm doing it. I'm um, sorry if people haven't enjoyed the first episode because frankly I don't usually do this sort of thing but I thought it'd be best if I actually do, if I'm going to do this, do it for something I'm actually enjoying so I can actually portray that to you that I'm actually enjoying it, you know, rather than just picking something that's popular off the shelf. and. Anyway, this is a really good series so far, and Episode 3 really hasn't let up. I mean, we've lost three players in Episode 3 here, less than 90 minutes into their match, and we've already lost Paws, Etho, and b O. And you, at least two of those, well, her, all three of them are both pri all prime players who people have been predicting would win. I mean, they've got their own camps, mine, but uh, no one would have seen that coming. Okay, to recap briefly what has happened this episode, we've seen uh, with Good. Uh, we've seen the skeletons tracking him. We thought it was an like AI glitch, most likely, because as far as I can tell, there's no other players in the area. He was a little bit worried at the first, but it just seemed to go away. Got trolled by an Enderman, keeping him from the gold. He eventually got around it by stairwaying down, managed to collect four gold. Good on him. He managed to start producing his chicken farm, so he's got a readable, ready supply of food going on. He's still low on iron, but finds more gold. <sighs> Unfortunately, he leaves the door open to his uh, base, I suppose you want to call it, hole in the hill. Uh, a couple of creepers find their way in. He manages to fend them off, no damage. Blocks it off again. More creepers arrive. He's just like attracting them from all over the place. It's unbelievable. It's almost like he's got a creeper farm set up. He does manage to um, get uh, a few XP off that. He manages to get an apple. The gold combines gold and apple. He's set there, but he's also still got full health, so he doesn't need it yet. Now, he trades up from his leather cap to a full set of iron. Nice start. He's well set now. Uh, within a couple of minutes, that already saves him a creeper blast. So obviously a good time to pick it. Uh, last minute of the episode, he's up on a hill chasing more chickens, spots some surface lava and makes his intent ready that he's gonna go make a surface po a portal. Maybe a surface portal, don't know yet, but considering how far it is from his base, travelling back and forth with lava, it seems likely he's gonna go for a surface portal. If he does go for a surface portal, that's gonna put him outside the sphere of influence from Paws' original portal in the nether. Now this is gonna tie in pretty crucially because if north in the nether is towards the stronghold, that's going to come out around about a distance, maybe 120, 130 blocks in the nether, which will probably put his portal down, bang, slap inside the, the nether fortress, which obviously gives him a big advantage there if he needs to get in and out quickly. So no one in the nether has so far found the nether wart required to make health potions, but yeah, it may look like Good is going to be the one to find it if he can dodge back and forth between the overworld and the nether really quickly. Of course, the first one to the nether has been pause on pause. He made it around the 75 minute mark, right beside him, entrance to a fortress, one of those long runways that ends in a few blocks. Digs around a bit, ends up making his way in, has found no nether wart yet. Only a couple of minutes behind him though, we've seen Etho enter the nether through his own portal, but unfortunately come out of the same portal actually in the nether. As I predicted, they've combined, they've, they've all linked onto that same first portal, which if we're in the next, if in the next series of this, that's going to probably be the biggest biggest strategy. You've got to get into the nether first and set up some sort of forward base in the nether. If you don't set up a forward base, if you have one in the nether, think about that. You get there first, you set up base, you can attack anyone coming in through that bottleneck. It's probably going to be a big tactic. Anyway, poor spies Etho, tries to sneak up with him. Unfortunately, Etho does spot him in advance and makes it to him. Uh, Etho, up to this point, had done pretty well. He managed to find himself enough iron to get himself together with a full suit of armour. He managed to make a portal and probably entered the nether less than a minute or so behind Paws, which is pretty tight. I mean, I couldn't. I probably have to go back and count the exact minutes since the uh, 60 minute marker, but it doesn't seem like more than a minute or so between them. When the confrontation happens in the nether, though, Etho tries to light Paws on fire, which is a base weapon. It's very good because it gives you duration damage. You know, you're on fire, you're losing health the entire time you're on fire. But for some reason, he does not switch up to his iron sword, which might have made all the difference. Because unfortunately, Paws hits back with his iron sword, knocks him flying off the end of the pier and into some soul sand, which just wipes Etho out. He's dead, he's out of the game. And Paws goes down, picks up his gold. Paws now has enough for a gold and apple if he had an apple. Now, Paws makes it back to the overworld. He's in a good mood here, he's just, got, he's just defeated Etho. He gets to the top of his base, though, up near the ground level, and what does he see in the distance? The name tag of Kurt J. Mack approaching. Now, Watching from Kurt's perspective, Kurt does not know that he's there up until the last minute. Kurt's wandering around looking for string. Kurt has had a... He's not had a bad, a bad start. He managed to backtrack at first to find his wolf. 
because he took a boat out and unfortunately took the route he took across the sea left too great an expanse of water for the wolf to respawn next to him and because of that the wolf went into a sitting position and didn't move around How, obviously that played to Kurt's advantage because when he went back the wolf was just sitting there in the shallow water he lets the wolf stand up moves across the sea in a shorter distance the wolf respawns and he's got the wolf with him from now on he makes it to the edge of a jungle biome where he unsuccessfully starts to try to start a jungle fire jungle fire forest fire jungle forest fire he then climbs a tree does a bit of uh, surveying the area spots a few spiders in the desert and thinks string bow fantastic very good idea he waits for the weather to let up and unfortunately by the time he gets back to ground to ground level the spiders have despawned so is the string left for them in the daytime and because unfortunately they got attacked and but yeah, unfortunately he decides to carry on. Moving into the desert, he doesn't find any spawners like he thought he might, so he carries on straight across the desert south, which leads him directly into Paws' territory. And while chasing chickens, again, through the forest, everyone loves chasing seeing chickens, he stumbles across a small gourd with torches in it, and follows the torches, just like you might follow a trail of breadcrumbs. And as he's creeping up, turns the corner, there's Paws. Paws gets the drop on Kurt, it's really tight, really, really hectic fighting just for a split second. Of course, though, Kurt's now got his wolf back with him. The wolf attacks as Kurt backs off, takes Paws out, Paws is dead, out of the game. Now, while all this has been happening in the overworld, Vintage Beef has just ported into Paws' base. See, Vintage Beef went out with his safety walls and did some caving, managed to get a full suit of iron up. It's good on him, if that's a good, it's, it's a good pullback there. Now, he's gone out wandering the overworld, finds what appears to be a pillbox gun emplacement sort of world feature. It's no way it's been produced by a player, but it does look like it would be. Paranoia sets him, so he digs in. At this point, he also decides to dig in nearby, deep, and he finds lava. So he decides, okay, nether portal. Now, this has been really galling for me, because I've been trying to follow these guys on the spawn map, and I work out that if he had built his portal only 60, maybe even 50 blocks further north, he would be outside the range of influence of Paws' portal. Of course, that would put him inside the range of influence of Good when he's got his portal done, but he hasn't yet. He could have been first to the nether in a different position, and unfortunately, when he goes back through the portal from the nether, he ends up in Paws' base. But before he does that, though, he does manage to build himself a golden apple. He replenishes two hearts, so he's up to four hearts there. On entering the nether, though, he doesn't really want to hang around, he's just taking a quick peek, take the layer of the land, back in the portal. Unfortunately, just doing that transfers him to Paws' base. Fortunately though, he does have all his gear on him, he hasn't been using chests. So, he's just dug in now in Paws' base, near the bottom of the map, and only Kurt is above him. This is going to come in pretty harsh, because Kurt is down to four hearts, and Beef is down to four hearts. They both have a full set of armour. Now, while Kurt's is going to be slightly damaged, it's still going to be giving the same protection until it gives up. And Kurt does have a wolf. Now, the problem we have here is not well, it's not so much a problem, it's the advantages, disadvantages. Beef is expecting to be in an occupied base. He's looking for someone, whereas Kurt is above ground and he's just defeated Paws in what he presumes is Paws' base, which it was. So, Kurt is not going to be looking for other enemies coming at him straight away. And while he's got the wolf, Beef is going to have the element of surprise. I mean, I hate to say the element of surprise, because it does sound a pretty hoary old saying, but in this case, it really will ring true. If Beef makes it up to, the ground, up to ground level, or Kurt decides to come down to the portal level, yeah, Kurt's not going to be expecting anything to happen, whereas Beef is going to be totally on guard, presuming he doesn't decide to make it back to the nether and try and find another way out. Our third death, of course, B00, end of the last episode, you expected it to happen with the Exploding Creepers, but apparently there was some sort of big conspiracy theory that somehow he'd edited it in to make people freak out at the end of the episode. Unfortunately, no. His video starts with a nice, touching monologue to the camera, and yes, I was one of those people who could only stare at his face waiting for him to do something. <sighs> so yeah, he's in, he's out, he's dead. And spends the rest of his 24 minutes of his video with a blank screen, just so people will not think that he's died straight away. Because obviously, if you see a video that's shorter than everyone else's, you know something's happened. Even right from the set, right from the get-go, you know that, oh wait, their video is only, say, 20 minutes long, Etho. Then you know he's not going to make it through all the whole episode. It's a shame, but it's it's, it's, it's a very nice touch from B Double. It's very caring. It's, it's caring about the viewers, or possibly trolling them. I'm not quite sure. But either case, it's a very nice touch. Very nice touch on the editing. And likewise on the editing, Badger's been spending a lot of time on uh, his editing. 
Again, nice use of background music, nice sets pacing and tension. His monologue was a little bit jarring at first because it was so apart from everyone else's, but you're really starting to enjoy it at this point. And who knows how much longer we'll get to enjoy it for, though, because at the end of his episode, he's managed to get himself a partial suit of iron, but he has been resort he's had to resort to going out at night killing zombies to eat their flesh. And he's managed to get himself down to just two and a half hearts at the end of the episode, and he's outside at night fighting zombies. It's he, He's really in a, in a bind here, and being so isolated in the top corner of the map. I mean, if he survives the next sort of few minutes, manages to get his health bars back up, there's a small chance, but it's not looking good for Badge. It's not looking good at all, I'm sad to say. Last but not least, we've seen Doc M. He's been out. He's managed to make collect so enough iron from underground to make himself an iron chest plate, followed later by iron pants. He managed to find himself an apple, and he's also probably the first player to use glass to any degree. I don't know, most people wouldn't consider it a bit, a bit of a luxury there, but he's created a small glass portal on the side of his... Uh, glass portal? It's called a window, isn't it? He's managed to create one on the side of his base so he can look out across the sea, obviously keep an eye out for anything that comes across, obviously see whether it's day not day or night outside. Um, I've also seen... he's not, he's not pulled through, but he's stable now, I'd say. He's stable. He's... Hasn't got much in the way of health, but he has got himself a little base, and he's well secured, and he is off in an area that no one's really exploring, so he could, say, last people out to quite a degree here. Um, he's also using an unusual digging method, that you usually see people making steps downwards, where he's digging down and diagonal, so he's actually taking out an area of, of what's five blocks, and one to go down, one to the left, one down, and one forward at the same time. So he's, he's clearing a lot, of, uh, a lot of dirt here, and a lot of brick, but... A lot of um, stone. Uh, so he's wearing his tools out quite fast, and he's, he's using some very unusual tactics here. And so if he comes around for season four, I'm um, I'm kind of expecting that he'll probably change a lot of these tactics. So far, uh, they haven't really seemed to be working very strongly for him. So at the end of episode three, we have Bad with just two and a half hearts, Beef with four hearts, Doc M with one heart, Kurt with four hearts, and Good at full health with ten hearts. Now. You've got to keep in mind here, Kurt has just killed Paws. Will he notice that in the remains of Paws' inventory, will he has Netherrack? If he notices that, then he'll probably head down. I can't think uh, Paws, I can't think Kurt would really want to go into Paws' base unless he thinks there's some advantage in it. So, if he sees Netherrack, he'll think, Nether Portal, free way to the Nether, free way to get uh, the required Nether Wart to make potions. So, if he notices that and makes that connection, he'll probably be heading down, and that'll be taking him down towards Beef. You've got to keep in mind, though, Paws' base is also a bit of a maze. He's done a lot of side branches off into little caves, lots of twists and turns. Finding a way down to the nether portal will be very tricky, if you don't know the layout already. Whereas, of course, Beef is coming up, and there's really only one clear way up. It's very much a, a case if it's harder to invade than it is to escape. So again, Beef will probably have a tactical advantage there, whereas Kurt's narrow corridors, will the wolf be able to get by him? If he gets attacked first, will the wolf be able to get to Beef in time? It's really anyone's guess what's going to happen there, but a lot of it will depend on whether Kurt dares to go down into Paws' base. I don't see it as very likely that Beef will go back into the nether, because frankly you'd need more Ascidian to get out of that base, and you'd need to know where you're going, and you'd still be guessing about where you'd come out above ground. It's a very hard call to make. So far, I think my odds are going to have to be on Good because Good has full health right now. He's going to be making his portal outside of the influence zone of Pause's portal. So he'll be entering the nether roughly, say, 120, 140 blocks away from the original portal. So he's not, he's not included in that same strategic bottleneck. He's still going to have a good chance of getting in and getting out without meeting anyone else. Uh, so he's... Yeah, and even if he doesn't does mean his, he's got the most health. He's probably best off for uh, food resources. He's started making himself a wood farm, which admittedly hasn't grown anything yet. Uh, he's probably going. If if nothing else, he could win this purely as a war of attrition. Just wait till everyone else dies off from natural re natural causes, and with the other players' health being what it is, it does seem like that wouldn't be too hard to occur. Anyway, I am really looking forward to episode 4, which should be out tomorrow night, and yeah, it would be really good to see who, who lives, who survives, if we've got more than 5, well, not going to have more than 5, but if, how many of the 5 currently live players we see going into episode 5.